All right, I'm recording now. All right, a uh, couple of things. Can you guys see me okay and hear me okay? Yeah. Okay. Um, I gotta make sure everybody's in here. Um, I put yesterday's lecture on Schoology. It's also on my YouTube site. And so what it says is, it says a lecture, it says the day, it says the period. So if you wanna watch second period's lecture, you can. I actually think third period, I gave more information, you know, because that's just what happened. So you'll see that and then it'll hook up to a link, my YouTube link. You're gonna see other stuff that's on there that you might find helpful, okay. Uh, tomorrow, everybody's online. I will be, if you were in class last Friday, which all the gold people were, correct? Is that correct? Yeah. Yep. So yeah. I am going to be emailing, I'll be scanning your test and emailing it before uh, class tomorrow. Does everybody see that? And you're going to, I'm going to go through uh, the tests and I encourage you to argue for points. Okay, or correctness, because I go through them really, really fast and there may be errors. And here's the other thing that I do and other teachers think I'm nuts, but I found it to be very successful. I always go through and pick a couple of people and they have correct answers and I mark them wrong. And the reason I do that is so that you look at the test and that you understand the material saying, hey, 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 I did the right thing here. He marked it wrong. And I want you, I'm trying to get you to advocate for yourselves and understand the material. Does everybody understand that? So, and I don't tell the people who they are. Last year, uh, most of the time it was uh, Jared Krebs, if you know him. I did a lot to Jared, because so, he was fun to do it with. Just nice guy. But there are other people too, okay? So William, I don't think it'll be you though. Is that like, you're trying to throw me off here. I'm telling, I can tell. It's gonna be me now. Did you get another haircut? I got a haircut yesterday. I mean, well, I had one yesterday. Same oh. haircut. Okay, do you get a haircut every day? Yeah, every day. Do you do it yourself? No, my own personal stylist. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. Oh, cool. I have, I have my own personal stylist too. I bet you do. <laughs> It's uh oh, I have to use, what razor do I use? I get it at Target. I used to get it online, but now I get it at Target. It's a nice razor. It's the best razor. I've gone through a lot of razors and finally found the perfect razor. So can you guys hear me okay? I feel like I barely can talk. Are you guys, Grayson, can you hear me okay? Okay. So that anyway, that's the uh, information about the test. And um, I'm going to hand... Uh, this class, the next worksheet, which is on graphs, which we're headed towards in a bit, okay? So I'm gonna get up from this and then I'm gonna start sharing my screen. So. I like how they split you guys so evenly. 16 people out in the abyss, and there are five people in here. It's like, crazy. Have I commented on your shoes already? They're cool. I'm like, those shoes too. Shoes are just a lot cooler than they are. Those are cool shoes. Those are dirty shoes. Shoes are cool. <laughs> You know what? I'm also apologizing for all the people. Lily, did I even call on you yesterday? Yeah, you did. Okay. Did I call on uh, Alexis? Did I call on you? 
Uh, no. No, Alexis, I sent you an email and you could ignore it. Oh, well, I, I did what it said, so. Well, you didn't have to because all of a sudden I saw that you had emailed it and I was confused at first and now I'm unconfused. So I'm sorry about that. Yeah, I was confused because you said to email the test to you and then, I don't know, I just, I hope it's all figured out now. So. No, I got it all figured out. And like I said, I'll have everything corrected tomorrow. So uh, you're in good shape. It has nothing to do with you. It has me not being careful enough, I guess. Okay. All right. We were talking about limits yesterday. Is that right, Audrey? Yeah, that's right. Right? I got to share my screen with you here. Share screen. I want a blank piece of paper. Thank you. So, Audrey, what can you, what did we talk about yesterday? Uh, we talked about uh, continuous functions and their limits and all the different kinds of functions like with holes and with jumps and how the limits are affected. Okay, I, that's really a good summary. So, limits. As a limit approaches some number, and I'll call C, of a particular function. And it, L is, L can only be one number, correct? Yeah. Okay. So what has to happen for this to be true? Uh, sorry, say that again. So. My mom came in and I If to... I have this general form of a limit, okay? X is approaching some number that I call C of a particular function. How, when do I know it has a limit? Oh, uh, when both sides are approaching the same number. Yeah, 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 yeah. What do you mean by both sides? Uh, so the side from the left is approaching the same number that the side from the right is. So, so it's this, getting closer to this the means, same. This means side from the left? Yeah. And you said is equal to the side from the right? So something like that. Would you agree? Yeah. That perfect, 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 perfect. All right. So, um, here were our notes. Uh, Gibbs, I gotta get used to that. How far did we get? On the notes? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, we did, did we the do jump. these? Uh, well, I know we did ones with the jump. I'm not sure if they are these exactly. We got uh, done with E. We got done with E. Okay, yeah. so we, we're gonna look at these then. We're gonna look at piecewise graphs. Does that sound correct? Yeah, we didn't do these yet. No, we didn't do these at all, right? But we had done everything else, correct? Yeah. Okay, just check it. All righty, so this is a very typical AP question that you'll see on the test, okay? They'll give you a graph, they'll tell you this is f of x. And then they'll give you a series of questions, they'll letter by letters here, and I'm gonna start off with this one. And I am going to I'm wondering who this person is here. Is it the first five letters? Is it Ella? Ella Nelson. Yes, it is. I figured it out. Ella Nelson, can you tell me what F of three is? Uh three. One, two, three. One, two, three. No, I don't think so. 
there's no point at f of three at three comma three. You want to try another one? Not sure. Pass. Yeah, great response. I love passing. I like. So I'm going to ask somebody else. I'm going to ask Bailey. Do you think you know what f of three is? One. It's one. Sure enough, at three comma one, there's a dot. Okay. So, um, uh, Ella, I'll come back to you on another question. Okay. So, Karina, I know I. What is the limit as x approaches three of f of x? So, in other words. I'm headed towards three. So here's one, here's two, I'm past two. So my function's down here, right? And as I get closer and closer from both the left and the right, here I'm passing one, two, three, here I'm passing four. I'm getting close to what y, Karina? Closer to zero? Well, zero's right here. And I'm way down here. Oh, getting closer to two? Negative two? Negative two. Very good. Yes, it is getting closer to a negative two. Now, negative two, uh, three comma negative two is not a point that's on the function, is it? It's a whole. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you right now, one thing you want to do, you want to put in your notes, all holes have limits. All holes have limits. And this is definitely a hole. I have a definition of that hole. And as I approach it, I'm headed down to the function. Even though there isn't a value there, as I'm getting close, I'm getting close to this y value, which happens to be a negative two. Very good. All right, back to Ella Nelson. What is, uh, I don't want this, sorry Ella. F of negative two. Negative one. Negative one, perfect. Very good. D, what's the limit as I approach negative two from the left, f of x equals. So, hope. So, zero. oh, it is zero, very good, yeah, because as I'm headed here and pass a negative three, this the function's dropping, getting closer to zero. Very good. E, the limit as x approaches negative two from the right of f of x equals Jada. What do you think? Uh, zero. Well, let's take a look. Here I'm coming from the right, correct? I'm headed towards a negative two. And down here is my y. It's not changing too much. And now I passed a negative one. I'm getting closer to a negative two. What y value do I seem to always be going to? Negative one. It's negative one. Does everybody see that? Okay, so f, what's the limit as x approaches a negative two f of x? Sarah. Would it just be zero? Uh, no. I'm going to call on, I'm going to come back to you, Sarah. I'm going to call on Tucker. Uh, 
DNE. What does DNE stand for? Does not exist. Why justify? That's what it's going to say. It's going to say either explain or justify your answer. So what's your justification for your answer? Yeah. The one coming from the left does not equal the one coming from the right. And since they're not the same, it does not exist. Okay. Um, Jordan Smith. This was a hole. What's this? That one would be a jump. Yeah, it's a jump. Okay. And you can't use jump as part of your justification. You have to do it like Tucker. You have to talk about what's happening from the left and the right. Okay. And you're going to get, I'm telling you, you're going to get that on, on uh, Monday's quiz. And I'm going to say, why do you, what's the justification for your answer? And some people are going to say it because it's a hole or some people are going to say because it's a jump. And I'm going to mark it wrong. You have to talk about what's happening from the left and the right. Does everybody understand that? Um, all jumps do not have limits. All holes have limits. So, Morgan, what's your last name, Morgan? Morgan Schreifels? Yeah. Okay. So now we're going to go to this one. This one I actually, I also copied from, I think this one I made, but this one's actually from an AP exam. I think it's from like uh, 2005 or something like that. Okay. So this thing, it says y equals f of x and here's the graph. And it's a piecewise graph, right? Does everybody see that it's piecewise? So here's a uh, what's Morgan Schreifels? What's f of one? Uh, two. Two. B. Sophia, what's the limit as x approaches one of f of x? Two. Well, let's look. So here I'm headed towards one. I'm going to here. I'm headed towards one. I'm going to here. I'm headed towards one. I'm going to here. That's from the left. From the right, I'm headed this way. I'm headed to here. Right? Because this is my graph right here. I'm headed here. I'm headed here. Remember, it's what I'm approaching as I approach one. What y value I'm moving closer to as I get closer to one. Not what I am at one, what I am as I approach. So one. do you have one is your answer? Very good. All right. C. I get the limit. Oh, sorry. I didn't want to write that. William, what's f of two? Two. The limit as x approaches two of f of x. Uh, Zach. Would it be two? Well, let's look. As I approach two from the left, I'm going to go up to my graph. Okay. And as I approach right, I'm going to go up to my graph. I don't think it's two. Want to take another shot? Is it DNE? It is DNE. Okay. It is DNE. Do you want to tell me why it's DNE? Because it's approaching um, a different Y value from each side. Okay. So could you tell me what it's approaching from the left? 
Two. And what's approaching from the right? Three. Three. Correct. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And it's also a jump, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, e. Um, Caleb, what's F of four? There isn't one, correct? So you are correct. Now we got to figure out how we're going to, what, you know, how are you going to say that in math? Does not exist? Perfect. Somebody also in the previous class says it's not defined. Right? Four is not part of the domain, but how can you argue with DNA? Right? It's easy. A lot less work. I'm into like no work. Uh, F. The guy on your left right now. What's his name? Gabe. Why am I having such a hard time remembering Gabe's first name? Gabe, what's the limit as x approaches 4 of f of x? Okay, which one is it? Is it D and E or is it 2? It is 2. Okay, now see how these questions? They're so tricky. Because what happens in your mind, oh, I just wrote D and E dealing with four, it kind of sucks you almost that way, doesn't it? It's happened to me. But it's asking something different, right? It's not asking what value is there. It's asking what are you getting close to? Okay. It's kind of like, I just thought of this, it's kind of like a rainbow. You can kind of see where the rainbow is, right? But I hate to tell you this. There's no pot of gold when you get there. Okay. Uh, so this was, what'd you say? Two? Two. All righty. Uh, this one right here. I don't know why there's a C here. I'm just going to write A. F of zero. Raina. I'm going to get this up a little higher so people can see it. Two is correct. B. The limit as x approaches zero of f of x. Grayson. Does not exist. Why? And be specific. Okay, so for the people that may not have heard him, he says uh, from the left side, as the function approaches zero, uh, the, the limit is three, and coming from the right, the limit is two. I know that's not exactly what you said, I'm paraphrasing you, but I'm, I think I'm correct, aren't I? Okay. Okay, C. Um, Ella, what's F of one? Zero. Perfect. D, what's the limit as X approaches one of F of X? Um, Alexis. I'll pass. Okay. Uh, Audrey. Zero. Zero. Very good. It's continuous there, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So where it's continuous, uh, the, f the value f of one is equal to the limit. 
where it's continuous. And you can see as you're approaching, as you're approaching, you're dropping down to one. And sure enough, at and it's continuous right there. Awesome. Um, D Alexis, what's f of two? Four. Four. Perfect. Uh, e, the limit as x approaches two of f of x. What is that, um, Bailey? Is it, does that exist? Well, is, would you describe this as a hole or a jump? A hole. A hole. So since it's a hole, it's got to have a limit. So as I go by, as I come from the right, as I go by three, I'm headed toward, towards a Y. And as I'm headed toward past, go past one and head towards two, I'm headed to a certain Y. You want, do you think you see that Y now? Negative two. Negative two is correct. Sir, can I ask why um, you went down instead of up for that one? Because that's where the graph is? Okay, I was just asking because there was like um, at two, there's four, and then there's also like the hole at negative two. So I was right. Wondering. So, right. So there's a hole at two. I agree with that 100%. However, I use the graph to tell me what the limit is because oh, okay. Thank you. I'm approaching that. I'm not, there's nothing to go up to here. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah, I see that now. Sorry. No, it's a really, really valid question because my guess is you haven't gotten a lot of work with these types of graphs. And that's why, um, so what happens on the AP exam, once you guys are done and you find out your results, I find out your results also, and you'll find out in July, I also get a report card on what my students know and what they don't know. And my report card said, I need to do a better job with graphs, especially piecewise graphs, because they're new and unfamiliar in how to work with it. So I think the questions that you have, I'm trying to fix because they are new and, and give you some more of those experiences. Is that kind of making sense? Yeah. So I think it's a really good question. I mean, all your whys are down here. So you get the two and then you jump up to here and only for that moment. But I want you to always remember that if there's a hole, there's a limit at where that hole is. Have you noticed that? The limit is where that hole is. Not what the defined value is, okay? And if you look at this one right here with four, there's no defined value, but there's still a hole there, correct? So that limit still has to be two over here. Is that, I think that was a really good question and I'm hoping I'm doing a good job explaining that. Are you guys okay with that? Yeah. Okay. I probably talked way too long. All right, so this is what where we're headed. This is the last part of the limits. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a better job of explaining this than today. Okay. And I'm gonna read it. This is the formal definition of a limit. You do not AP, the AP exam does not test you on the formal definition of a limit. However, I will. And the reason I do is there's a number of things that my students, when they graduate and go to college and take a calculus class, they'll say, I did really, really well, but I didn't know this. And I really think you should teach this in your class. 
An example is there is a guy that he's now an engineer in Duluth named Joe Dieters, and he did really well. He's a really good engineer, but he had to learn integration by parts on his own. The teacher expected that he would know integration by parts. And I felt bad about that. So I teach integration by parts, even though that's not on the AP exam. It is on the BC exam, but not the AB exam. When you get to college, they'll expect that you know the definition of a limit. So I teach the definition of a limit. And it's difficult for me to teach until, until I had an idea about boiling eggs. Hope, have you ever boiled an egg? Um, I don't like eggs, so, so no. So no, uh, that's perfectly okay. My wife doesn't like eggs either. Bailey, have you ever boiled an egg? I have to agree with Hope. <laughs> Gibbs, you gotta like eggs. Oh, I like eggs. Good, I, I knew I could count on you. You know what? I'm enjoying calling you Gibbs. I hope that's okay. That's fine. Okay. You know what? My enjoyments are very small, but it gives me a great, you know, it just makes me smile underneath this mask, call you Gibbs all the time. So what if I called you Gibble? Would that be like bad? I mean, most people call me Gibby, but. Oh, Gibby. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Um, so you, so this is what's happened to me, okay? And it's happened to me several times. I cannot, I know people that can multitask, I'm not one of them. And I'll give you the story. So I make about 10 hard boiled eggs at a time. And what I do is I put 10 eggs in a container, a pot, and I fill it so it covers the eggs. And then I cover the pot and I put the pot on the stove and I turn it on high. And since I'm gonna multitask, I decided to go downstairs where our computer is. Our computer is not by the kitchen. Our stove's by the kitchen. Our computer's downstairs. So I go downstairs, that's where my dog Rosie is. I'm talking to Rosie and my purpose is to go on to the internet and buy something on, a, on Amazon. Well, I get sucked into the abyss, and an hour and a half later, I smell something. So the water is boiled off all the eggs. The eggs are no longer white. They're kind of an ashen kind of color. And if you do that to eggs, burn eggs, they smell really bad. And they can kind of ruin the pan. I've only done that like five, six times. Okay. So I know I'm no longer allowed to go on the internet when I'm boiling eggs. Okay, so this is what happens, Karina. I work in the kitchen, like I empty the dishwasher. I wash your dishes because, you know, the idea of a watch pot never boils, right? So I got to be doing something. But every once in a while, I take a look at the boiling pot of water to make sure I don't want it to be too aggressive because it would overboil, right? And I don't want to be too cold because it'll never, they won't get hard, right? Right. So Karina, here's my question. Because I'm always thinking about math. I'm looking at this boiling pot of water. Is that an input or is that an output? be an output because it's what's happening after you put the water and the eggs in the pot? I agree with you a hundred percent. It's an output. Okay. So I'm going to draw a little picture. Are you okay with that?
Okay. Boiling water. Right, you said it was an output. My outputs go here, correct? Mm -hmm. Right, here's my graph. I don't even know if that graph is. It wasn't boiling. Now it's boiling perfectly. Now it's over boiling. Are you okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. What in the heck's my input? Here you know. Your input would be. In other, word, in other words, something has to make that water boil, right? Mm -hmm. I just, I, I mean, I have no magic. Some people think I have magical powers, but I don't. Okay. They don't exist. I don't say, hey, boil. <laughs> the input would be the heat. Yeah, right? The heat, correct? Heat. <laughs> Right? Perfect. If I got heat on that pan, okay, so I have a little dial that monitors the heat, okay? This is off. This would be high. Right here is low. Right here is medium. Okay? Right here is C. Karina, do you know why I picked the letter C? Because it starts with my name. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. And it's my favorite letter. Oh. <laughs> and my first name starts with C, too. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. So you know what C stands for here? It's the perfect spot. It's the perfect amount of heat to get this to water to boil. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this right here would be, and it's continuous, right? Right. Right, it's gotta be continuous, right? It's not like, okay, it stops getting warmer, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So if this is C, what's this point right here? F of what's C. The y? Yeah, it's F of C, correct? Mm -hmm. Everybody with me on that? Okay, now, when I turn that dial, I don't even know what C is. I just, you know, because I don't know if you could see me, but you know, I'm looking at that, and you'll see it tonight on the video. It's going to be exciting. I get kind of snarky, and my wife thinks I'm stupid, but she's going to be there making comments, okay? Maybe, I hope she is. So I turn that dial, you know, because if it gets too aggressive, I back it off. Would you agree? If it's not boiling hard enough, I turn it up. Would you agree? So I'm approaching C. Like I could be, I'm headed this way from the right and the left, right? Doesn't it yell limit all over the place? That's what I'm thinking about when I'm cooking. I'm going, oh my God, this is limit. This is math. Well, if I'm here or if I'm here, I call that a distance, right? I'm not quite at C, am I? So I call that delta. Okay. So the absolute value of X minus C is less than delta. Now, I want to back up, okay? And you got to kind of follow my thinking on this, okay? Gibbs, are you still with me or did you go oh, get I'm, a sandwich? I'm here. Do you like sandwiches, Gibbs? Uh, kind of. I mean, they're not my favorite. Hope, oh, you like sandwiches? 
I love sandwiches. I bet you don't like egg salad sandwiches, though. No. Okay. Sarah, do you like sandwiches? I do. I have the same sandwich every day for lunch. Turkey sandwich. It's got to be turkey breast because that keeps me. I lost like 85 pounds. So if I eat like food, it gets. So anyway, so Sarah, what I'm saying here, I'm turning this dial trying to find the perfect C, correct? Yeah. Okay. And so since X is where I am on this dial, the delta is always getting smaller. Because C keeps getting, get, I mean, X keeps getting closer and closer till I find that perfect C. Does that make sense? It might have been here at first. And then it becomes here. And then it might have jumped over here. And then it's back to here. Delta is always changing, correct? So that X minus C is the distance that my dial is from that perfect spot. Does everybody understand that? And it's always going to be less than delta because I'm moving closer and closer all the time because I'm approaching C. Does that make sense? All right. So right here, I'm going to go up to my graph. And up here, I'm going to go up to my graph. And I'm approaching F of C. I'm approaching that perfect spot. And since it's continuous, F of C is going to equal L in this case. But if it could be a whole, right? You know, because I might not be boiling eggs. I might have a funky graph in which I have a hole. Boiling eggs is real and it's continuous. But we've seen functions out there that have holes and they have limits, right? And I'll get to that in a bit. But right now, F of C with my boiling water, F of C equals L. Well, F of C, my perfect spot, minus my limit, because as I get closer, these numbers change. It's going to be less than something else. So right here is F of C. Right here is F of X1. Here's F of X2. And I'm sorry, I didn't want to call this C. I'm going to call this X. That's my mistake. Here's F of X3. Here's f of x4. You guys see what I'm doing? Every time I'm dialing this, I'm getting a new boiling water. I keep getting closer and closer to that perfect spot. Minus that limit is less than something I'm going to call epsilon. Because I want epsilon to be really, really small. I mean, if this is 200 degrees, 212 degrees, I don't want to be at 289 degrees. I got trouble, don't I? I don't want to be at 20, de 20 degrees. Nothing's going to boil. Even at 70 degrees, nothing's going to boil. Nothing's going to boil at 100 degrees, right? I can put my hand into 100 degree water. It won't hurt me. I've been outside when it's 100 degrees. My skin isn't, it's burning, you know, because I'm from, I don't have good skin, but I'm not boiling. Now, William, have you ever cooked? A little bit. Okay, so I hate to tell, I got a lot of bad stories about me. I've already told how I've, I burnt coleslaw one time. That's how bad of a cook I am. Okay, and people say, how do you do that? I thought, put coleslaw on the stove. You guys know what coleslaw is? 
It's supposed to be cold. Warming it up is not a good choice. So anyway, sometimes what I've done is filled my pot of water, have my eggs on it, put it on the cover, turn on the knob, and come back 15 minutes later and the water hasn't changed. You know why? You know why, Zach, that happened? No. I put it on, I turned the knob of the wrong burner. In other words, there has to be a relationship with this burner and this boiling. They got to be related somehow, right? When one changes, the other one's got to change. And so what I'm doing is I'm making this epsilon smaller and smaller. How am I doing that? By reducing this delta smaller and smaller, correct? I'll say it again. If I make epsilon smaller and smaller, I'm getting at the perfect boiling spot. How do I do that? I make delta smaller and smaller. If I make delta move closer to that perfect C, epsilon is going to get smaller and be at the perfect watering spot. Would you agree with that? All right. So I'm going to show you what the definition looks like. It looks really, really scary. And I'm going to talk about this more on Friday because I'm going to show you a proof. It says, suppose you have some type of function and it's defined for all x in an open interval that contains a c. So here's my dial. It goes from off to high. And all these values are defined. And c is in that open interval. I don't want to be off. That'd be stupid to boil eggs when the burner's off, correct? It's stupid to keep it on high, right? I want to be somewhere in between there. Now notice right here it says, but not necessarily at x equals c. Why is that? Because and it's not true in boiling water, but I could have a graph with a hole in it, right? Correct? That is saying, hey, there are these stupid f of x's that have holes in them, but they have limits. So this is what I call the fine print, okay? And so then we're going to talk about this stuff and how it relates on Thursday, okay? That's as far as I'm going to get today because it's tough to concentrate. So um, what these guys are going to do is work, uh, begin to work on their um, worksheets, which are due at the end of the period tomorrow, okay? If you guys want to do that, you can also. Do you want me to have, do you want to keep this recording going or do you feel comfortable contacting me by text and not have to be on the Zoom? I'll let, what do you guys think? I, in fact, this is what I'll do. I'll keep this running and if you want to get off, you can. And if you want to get back on, you can, if you feel you need to ask me a question. Does that seem okay? Sounds good. Worksheets on Schoology. Pardon? Um, are the worksheets that you're... Yep, they should be. Okay. Yeah, I believe I put them on there. Uh, now you got me worried. Let me look. You did put them on there. Okay, <laughs> thank you. I like it when somebody knows, tells me I did something right. God, we'll be able to have class tomorrow and I won't be wearing a mask. That'll be cool. You guys won't have to be masked. I'll actually get to, see, well, I can see you. I can see. Hope, did you get a haircut? 
No, I, I didn't. Oh, you didn't. Okay. All righty. Well, uh, that's what we're going to do for the rest of the period. Okay. All righty.